So I have something kind of fun to share with you guys today, which is this. I call this the Sparrow Mach 1. Actually, it's just a little running gun shooting rig that I've built around the Sony RX100 5, which I've been shooting with, with for about two weeks now, and I absolutely love this camera. It is fantastic. I had the 3, I had the 4, now the 5. And what I love the most about this, particularly with video, is that you're able to get results that rival what you're able to do on much more expensive and much larger cameras. And it's all in the form factor that will fit in your pocket that you can carry around with you anywhere. And so I really like that. Now, they do have a major Achilles heel to them, a lot of point and shoots, uh, not just the RX105. On this camera, there is no microphone or audio input, and that's a little bit of a drag because you're stuck with only capturing audio with the built-in mics. If you've ever used the built-in mics on any camera, you know that they're pretty awful, and that's straight across the board. A lot of that has to do with the form factor of the camera, and the microphones are just kind of stuck into that. They're teeny tiny. They have a way of finding any imperfection and anything that's ugly about the sound in a room and amplifying it. Sometimes you can get away with using built-in microphones outdoors, but even then you have wind problems, so you need to get windscreen for them at least. So I wanted to have a solution of something that was really lightweight, really portable, really easy to use where I could capture audio and do vlog style stuff. I could do interview footage if I wanted and I get better audio than what I've got in the camera itself. So I'll walk you through this and this is pretty cool. So this bar is uh, that everything's mounted to is made by a company called Velo and I think I got this for like seven dollars and it's super cool. It's got two tripod mounts on it and I didn't realize this when I got it but you can actually mount four things to it because each one of the tripod mounts in the screw can accept another tripod mount. So it gives you a lot of flexibility. So what I've got on here the Sony RX105. The microphone itself is made by a company called Rode, and this is the Rode Video Micro. Don't get it confused with the flagship that everybody uses from Rode, which is the Rode Video Mic Pro. This is the Rode Video Micro, which is a very small uh, shotgun mic. It comes with the dead cat. Uh, it has a shock mount suspension on it, which is really cool, and just an audio output. And for you know, 50 to $60 range, you get a lot of bang for your buck out of this. And so I have the audio running into the input of a Zoom H1. Zoom is a company that makes audio interfaces, a lot of field recorders. Their price point is usually really good. Um, they're very inexpensive and this just works as a recorder. Now I will explain in a second why I am not using the mics that are built into the Zoom. Uh, but and the, the last component on here is just the handle and I cobbled this together out of some parts that I had in the studio. So the, uh, the actual head here uh, came off of a uh, Manfrotto monopod that I had that I haven't used in a while. And what's nice is you can tilt and tighten this. And then this handle, I can't remember for the life of me where I got this. I, I may have just ordered it off of Amazon or B&H years ago, but it's just a handle with a, with a tripod screw in it so you can you can screw that on and what's nice about this is it allows you to hold it out a little bit further uh, so it's just not up in your face if you're doing a vlog style thing if you're shooting yourself uh, it also gives you something to grip onto if you're running gun shooting whatever and so here's what's really cool about this is because this is a um, releasable plate here this is a Manfrotto plate and which is a universal design so if you have a Man Manfrotto tripod chances are you could either one, optionally just hold it like this if you don't want the, the handle on there, or you could lock this down to a tripod. So you could do a lot of different shooting situations with this little rig. So let me back up a little bit and let me show you a little bit how this came to be. This is the Zoom H1, and this is kind of where I started with this. And the reason I did is because it is seriously small, seriously lightweight, it has built-in microphones, and it's just a bare bones audio recorder. Easy to find the record button. You just start and stop and you record. It's got a low cut filter if you want that. And my original idea is that I bought, um, this is just a little tripod mail-to-mail uh, -mail adapter. And so what I really wanted to do originally was just simply screw this into the bottom of the camera. And I got two little rubber washers on there so it wouldn't damage anything. And so this was the idea that I could run and gun and this would be the complete rig. Let's hear what this sounds like. All right, so first, just so you get a point of reference, what you're listening to right now is just the audio that comes off of the camera microphones, and you can tell it's not great. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and switch over, and now you're listening to audio that is coming in from the Zoom H1. Now this technically works, but when I stop talking, I want you to listen. It's really noisy, and there's both rumble coming from just subtle movements in the camera setup here, and there's also interference coming with the camera. This isn't going to work. The next thing I decided to try was to actually shock mount the zoom, and so I crammed this into this little piece, which is just a shock mount. It's two uh, rings with silicon bands in here. What this does is it isolates the actual recorder, so any vibrations that come through would not transfer to the device. Still didn't work. The next logical step was just to use a bracket 
and put it side by side with the camera. But the problem with this is the Zoom H1 is a great recorder and the microphones actually are pretty decent. And for the money, this is a very good recorder. You have to learn how to use it and it just is not gonna work for run and gun. And the problem is, is it's just made out of plastic. They do that to keep the cost and the weight and everything else down, but uh, it's just a problem. Then I realized I had another idea. The Zoom H1 has something that the camera doesn't, an audio input. Now we have the Rode Video Micro into the Zoom H1 that runs alongside the Sony RX105. Let's see what this sounds like. Once again, for a point of comparison, this is the built-in microphones on the camera, and then this is the Rode Video Micro, which you can tell is a huge difference. I don't have any of the rumbling and any of the weirdness that was coming off of the condenser mics on the Zoom H1. It sounds really good, and I'm actually really impressed with this. I figured because it was a lot smaller, it wasn't powered, that it just wouldn't sound as good as the other Rodes, and I have found that I do need to EQ it a little bit differently, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in post, but I'm really actually very impressed with this microphone. Let's check it out outside. Again, as a point of reference this is the built-in microphones in the camera then we move to the Rode Video Micro and it sounds a lot better there's a little bit of a breeze out here but not much I was hoping we could test the wind a little better but uh, the dead cat that sits on here seems to work pretty well I think this rig's gonna work out. Let's talk for just a second about microphone design. Now it is clearly beyond the scope of this video to talk about every type of microphone in existence, but let's at least focus on what's available to us here and what's probably our best choices to use with video production. Now probably one of the best ways to go is with something like this, and this is a lavalier microphone, and this is a small one. I've had this one for a long time. In fact, I probably did the first 350 videos that I made for this show with this microphone. It suited me well, it still works, it's great, it's fantastic, but what I don't like about it is that you're tethered to the audio recorder, you're tethered to the camera. You can get wireless mics as well, but still there's some setup involved, making sure it's not touching your shirt or gonna have any rattling or noise that's going to pick up on the recording. And so I really didn't wanna go this route for this little run and gun rig. Now, there is a microphone input on the Zoom H1, so you could use this with it. That is certainly a possibility. Now, we've been listening to some audio on the Zoom H1, and I like the Zoom H1, it's actually a very nice recorder and the microphones are very decent, but I am asking it to do something that it is clearly not designed to do. It's got a small plastic body, it's supposed to be lightweight and portable and just easy to use, but I'm asking it to attach to a device and move around and it just doesn't have enough isolation from the other noises with the way the body's designed on here. Um, this uses two condenser microphones, they run in stereo and in a X pattern in this case. They are fixed, you can't move them. And they're really good, but the other thing that I think is important to consider with a microphone is what is the microphone's pickup pattern? In other words, what in the field of audio that it's listening to is it really focusing in on the most? And of course, most mics are gonna work better the closer you are to the microphone, but what even range in that are you working with? And so I think that's one reason that a lot of people default to these shotgun type microphones. Now this is a Rode video mic. Um, I've got a video mic pro that I'm using that we're recording on right now as well. And when you take the windscreen off, you can, you can can actually see this but basically it's a really long mic in design and what it's designed to do is have a very narrow pickup pattern which means it's going to focus in on audio that's happening really much straight in front of it and so things that are off to the side or especially behind the microphone or behind the camera are not going to pick up as audibly as sounds that are right in the front and that's one reason why shotgun mics work really well they isolate whatever's in front of the camera if they're lined up with it and they tend to reject they don't really reject because it's not like things are tuned out but it's much quieter other things that are happening so these work really well when you're doing run and gun stuff and so that's why I decided to try the Rode Video Micro, which is the smallest one. This one does not have a battery in it. You just attach a cable and it's just a little mini design. Um, most of the Rode mics do have this lyre or lyre, I can't remember how to say it, the, it's the old Greek harp, uh, but it's this shape. And basically it's a formed piece of silicon which gives it a little bit of a shock mount. And so if it moves, it's probably not going to be as susceptible to noise. That's the biggest problem. I just could not isolate the Zoom H1 on its own. And as you're gonna hear in the next couple tests here, that the Rode Video Micro or any shotgun mic really has optimal results over just regular condenser mics anyway. So let's have a listen. So now we are using the full rig. This time we are locked down to the tripod, which is another thing that I love about this is that the versatility involved. And so I'm using the RX105 locked down to the tripod, and then we have the um, Zoom H1 that is being fed by the Rode Video Micro. This is a great setup, and I realize that it's a little bit of extra effort to bring in audio and video and then combine them in post. 
And yes, I wish Sony would put an input jack for a microphone or audio source into the camera, but it is what it is. And for me, it's worth the extra time because this rig is so small and it's so portable and it's so easy to use that when I do need audio like this, it's just worth the extra steps to get. So that is the run and gun micro rig. What did I call this? The Sparrow Mach 1. I will put links to all these parts in the show description if you guys are interested in building your own. You don't have to use these. I just literally improvised this whole thing. I was particularly impressed with the Rode Video Micro. I think it's gonna do the trick. It is an extra step to put everything together in post-production, but this is a really good solution if you want to use a camera that does not have a mic input. Now, what's also cool is you don't have to use this with this particular camera. You can use it with any camera. Now, I was thinking about it earlier. This is an old camera. This is a Canon 300HS, which at one point was the camera that everybody on YouTube was using. This was the vlogger camera. I bought mine a couple years ago for about 80 bucks. Um, it's a little bit dated now, but what was cool about this camera is it does shoot uh, 1080p HD video at 24 frames a second. So if you want the film look, it's really cool. Um, they're really cheap. It's super, super small. It's way smaller than the Sony. Um, it's not as obviously 4K or doesn't have nearly the manual control you're gonna get with the Sony, no picture profiles. In fact, I'm not even sure you can do exposure compensation on the video mode on this. But what's cool is like, let's say you get one of these for 80 bucks, the low light performance is gonna be pretty bad, but as long as you're shooting outside or something like that, it'll probably look okay. You mount this on here and also has image stabilization, this doesn't have a mic at jack either. And all of a sudden you've got a rig that you could probably put the whole thing together for in the neighborhood of $200 or less. So it's cost efficient as well. So anyway, I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and as always subscribe to The Art of Photography so you'll always be up to date on all the videos that I do here. Until the next one, I'll see you guys then. Later.